and welcome back to the Across the Pod NFL podcast. It's time to preview week nine of the 2023 season as we are now at the halfway stage of the campaign. I am, as ever, your host, Andy Davis, and with me, we've got a returning guest ahead of a massive game in Germany between the Chiefs and the Dolphins. Back with us today is Chiefs fan David Figgins. David, first of all, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, not too bad. Um, two or three days now back from America um, before I go back in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, just surprisingly actually got used to the jet lag. Hasn't been as much of an issue this time, but um, yeah, nice to be back in the UK for a little bit. And um, yeah, looking forward to the games on the weekend. Yeah, 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 same. So, um, as ever, we are doing predictions for each game of each week. Um, so last week we had our guest was Sky Pank, and he did pretty well. We both did, actually. We both only had one different scoreline, but I got the scoreline wrong. I said the Browns to win. He said the Seahawks. The Seahawks. So he actually had 12 correct scores um, from this weekend. Where I had 11. So looking at the leaderboard, um, as it stands at the moment, so Keg still leads away from the Magpie channel. He had 13 score predictions from th- week six. And then both myself and Sky are tied with 12 um, correct scores. Um, both from week eight for Sky and week six for myself. And then David Kaprosh with 10 in fourth. Freddie Harper Davis in fifth with eight. Um, sixth is Steve McGuinness with seven. And then I'm at the bottom as well with my six from week seven. So, David, you got a um, high bar to... Um, That's high, a really high bar. <laughs> high bar to set against. But um, how, are you confident in beating that score this week? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll try. I'll do it my best. <laughs> it is one of the hardest sports, to, the hardest sports to predict because there are yeah. so many um, like shock results and one should expect. So I think you know we both had me and um, I think it was me and Steve that we had the Niners beating the Browns and the Eagles beating the Jets and you know you know how those results went and you know even I know either yeah. both me and Sky had the Denver Broncos losing to the Chiefs and look what happened. So yeah, I'm expecting more of the same this week. Um, which starts off. On Thursday Night Football, this is the game between the Tennessee Titans and the Pittsburgh Steelers in Tennessee, in Nashville, at the Nissan Stadium. Um, and I'm going to give a win to the Titans. Um, I mean, I think if Will Leffers hadn't played like he did last week, I would have said the Steelers. Uh, but I think Kenny Pickett is a bit of an injury doubt, and Levis had a great day. Uh, fully well, fully aware that it may just be one week, uh, one week performance only. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm more confident in the Titans right now, purely because of Levis, than a, than a half half healthy um can he pick it how are you seeing it dave exactly the same as you um if if levis hadn't have like played the way that he did at the weekend uh, then i'd have probably said the steelers as well um but I, I, I get from the snapshot that we've seen of levis i'm quite confident that he's going to be quite a decent quarterback so and even if he's not long term uh, there's always that sort of um, wave that a lot of the newer quarterbacks ride at the start, particularly when they they come in, um, they come in after not after sitting for a while. So, um, yeah, yeah, I I agree with the Titans win there. Now, the reason why you're on the big game of the weekend is number one seed against number two overall seed, half two in the afternoon in the UK. I believe three thirty in Germany where the game's being played, and then I believe will be um. I believe it's 5.30, if not 6.30. I don't think that the clocks go back, I think, in America this week. But either way, it's a huge game in Frankfurt uh, between, obviously, the Chiefs and the Dolphins. What a game this is. First of all, Dave, are you going to the game? No. Um, I, I work in a school, so it's in, impossible to get any time off. Um, and to be honest, I'd have absolutely adored to go. Um, and I do know a couple of Chiefs fans that go in. Uh, I actually know a couple of Dolphins fans that go in as well. Um, and I, I can just imagine it being, particularly being the first game, um, in Germany as well to be to be, or the first game, um, NFL game in Germany that it's going to be really really pulling all the stops out. Um, and Germany are absolutely crazy about the game as well. Um, so yeah, I, it, I think I, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, me too. And I can only wish I was there. I mean, it's I did apply for media creds, was unfortunate not to get them. Um, and you know, I could have I could have gone, you know, paid the money, but to be frank, money's not exactly um 
healthy right now. My account is that money's a bit low, and I've got these trips to America booked in a couple of weeks. I've sort of I've got money for that, but the, the thought of forking out one fifty for a game ticket plus the hotel or Airbnb yeah, plus absolutely. the flight on top. I just basically I just can't afford it. Unless someone goes to me like Andy, you've got media creds. We're paying for your flight. We're paying for your accommodation. Obviously now I would, then I would go, but it's just it's just for me money wise right now. It's just not not feasible basically, and um. Yeah. It's a shame because it's the one year I would have traded all the three London games I just did media creds for to go to that game because that that was that'd be an amazing experience seeing your own team. Hopefully, it would be in the case where I've got to have, you know ask questions to you know Mike McDaniel, Tua, Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill. It would have been an amazing experience. But I saw Dolphins two weekends ago, so it's I've already seen them play this year. So it's not you know, as sad I am not not going, and there's loads of fans I know, Dolphins fans, and also Brad. I know Brad's going as well. Brad Simcox. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know a lot of friends of mine are going in the in the fan club, and it's a shame to not be there. But I think sometimes you have to um look at it from the bigger picture. And I I think for me right now, it's, it's just not feasible. And, I'm, and same for you as well. Um, yeah. In terms of the game, um, now, I think I'm more confident than I was a week ago because of Mahomes. Is he actually healthy because of the flu? Now, he's got a week to recover. Um, and I think, just like the Eagles game, I think we're playing Chiefs arguably the worst time after a loss. Um, and that's why I'm going to give him the win. I'm going to give the Chiefs the win. I think Mahomes will be fine again. I think he'll get back. I think that game is just a complete anomaly. I believe it was the first time, he, he's either been the first time in two years or the first time ever under Mahomes that they've not scored a touchdown in a whole game. Um, yeah. Probably the worst performance I've seen he, he never have, uh, the Chiefs ever have. I mean, two interceptions, zero touchdowns, I believe, as well. Um, and three other turnovers as well. Be over yet. So, it, it for me, it's just, I think that until we beat a good team, I can't <laughs> say anything about the Chiefs. When we haven't yet, we we played two teams of winning records and we've lost them both. So until we beat someone like the Chiefs or a good team, um, then I think I think I've got to say the Chiefs. And I imagine for you, David, same for you, the Chiefs winning. Um, no, I'm actually going to shock you. Yeah, I think I think the Dolphins will come out with a win. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, which is it's quite odd that we switched. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, I I think that the thing that absolutely the absolutely terrifies me is is the Dolphins' offense, um, particularly the versatility of it, um, how re- how excellent they are in the run game, um, and I think the the blueprint from the, the Broncos is gonna is gonna be there and a lot of teams are gonna try and adapt that blueprint because Peyton's obviously seen something that and it's worked because in the other game against the Broncos, um the Chiefs only scored 19 points um and that was a struggle to a win. Um and the and the defense which has been unbelievable for the Chiefs this season, which in the Mahomes era you don't really you've not really never really heard that before, but the the, the defense has been brilliant, particularly with the rookies from last year. Um, they've come on leaps and bounds. They were excellent last year, and they've seemed to take a, that that extra step. Um, but I think with that blueprint from other teams and the fact that um, the wide receivers aren't really um, performing up to standard, um, particularly uh, Sky Moore. I'm and McCall Hardman. I'm really not a fan of McCall Hardman. When we re-signed him, I wasn't happy with that. Um, I think he drops way too many catches. Um, the Sky Moore t- potential touchdown last week shows to me, and and again with the muffed um, punt returns and 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 kickoffs from last from last year, I'm not really confident that he's going to be a, a a decent wide receiver. There's no true number one wide wide receiver. Um, We've got a couple that maybe could be number two, number twos like MVS um, or Rishi Rice in the future, but there's no out and out wide receiver. Obviously, you've got Travis Kelsey, but it becomes a lot easier to to cover Travis Kelsey when the other wide receivers and as good. Um, with regards to Mahomes, I don't think he performed necessarily terribly against the Broncos. I just think the Broncos covered covered the receivers well and. A lot of receivers were, weren't catching balls that they probably should have caught. Um, and the thing for me is what I would be scared of is the Dolphins getting an early lead, the Chiefs not being able to catch up, and then the Dolphins just running the ball down, down the throat of the, the Chiefs' defence, which 
they've shown um, they can do against against good quality um, defenses. So, yeah, I, I I am going to go with the Dolphins victory there. I think you're right. I think we we have to score early because we showed it both in the Bills and Eagles losses that if we go behind it forces us to pass the ball. And I think then it becomes way too predictable where I think if we can establish lead early. So I do think if we win the toss, we receive it straight away. I think if you yeah. can do that, I think then we can then, I, I don't think HN is back yet, but I think we can use most of it and we can really establish a run game early because <laughs> to go seven points behind, 14 points behind in this game, like we've seen with those two games against Bills and Eagles, it's just forcing a throw the ball far too many times. And after a few plays, teams will just, Double cover Hill, double cover Waddle, and it just seems to work. So, yeah, for me, that's my big thing. I think it's the big test for us, and I think that, you know, if we can beat the Chiefs, I think it's a big statement because we haven't yet done it against a good team. Um, but I think, yeah, I think I'm more confident of a win here than I was against the Eagles. I think against the Eagles, I was, like, completely just not hopeful at all for win. And, you know, I, I, when I went to the game, I met I was an Eagles fan who was confident of the Dolphins win, and I was saying to him, look, you're going to beat us, and they did. So for me, it's a big tough. I'm looking forward to it. I've got the 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 double jeopardy. It's, it's a good problem to have, but I've got Liverpool playing at the same time, so I'm going to have to have the double screen option with Liverpool Luton on one screen. Probably the big screen, watching it with my dad, I'll probably have then one to hit half four. I'll then put the Chiefs-Dolphins game on my iPad and have to subscribe to the zone for the first time this year. So I haven't, I haven't wanted to do, but I'm going to have to for this game. Um, but yeah, either way, it's going to be a good game. I'm looking forward to it. And I am I wish I was there. But for everyone who's going to be here, for those listening or watching this, this episode, who are going to the game in Germany, whether you're a fan of the Chiefs and Dolphins or whether you're just going as a neutral or whether you're going as media staff, then I hope it's a great game because be the first game in, in Frankfurt, only the second ever in Germany, uh, a country that loves it. You know, I believe it's the second most watched sport in that country, um, in Germany. Uh, I think it's going to be electric and I think that's going to be people going to be... I want to give someone next week, hopefully, who's been to the game because I want to get their views on it because I think it's going to be electric, electric. Um, now, moving on to the, the next slate, the 6pm UK time slot, uh, as the Falcons take on the Vikings. Now, I would said the Vikings anyway, even if Cousins was playing... Um, uh, but I just think I just think that Josh Dobbs, I do worry about whether it, in the different playbook, it may take him a week to get adjusted to it. But at the same time, you know, it, it's um, still against a Falcons team that hasn't impressed me at all. Desmond Ritter is not the guy, in my opinion. And Taylor Heineke came in midway through the game. Um, so I'm going to give the Vikings to win, even if it is Josh Dobbs rather than Kirk Cousins. Um, and I'm going to be contrarian here. I think the Falcons, I think the thing with the Falcons is they seem to blow hot and cold, particularly. Um, I think if they factor in, if you fact again, kind of similar to what I was saying about Miami, if they're able to get some sort of early established lead, their run game is incredible. Um, and I, for that reason, that's where I'm going to go with, with the Falcons. They blow really, really hot and cold. I think with the added factor of no cut cousins and somebody, somebody coming in trying to learn what the offense is. Um, I'm not really familiar with types of offense, so I wouldn't really be able to comment on that. But um, I just think trying to come straight in and, and start off with a win, I think would be quite difficult. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Falcons. Okay. And then speaking of Josh Dobbs, his former team, the Cardinals, traveled to the Browns to take on the Cleveland Browns. Um, the Browns' defense is just unbelievable. Um, I, I just, I think, and I think that's what will will win this game, depending on obviously, and if Watson's fit, um, because he's questionable at the moment, I think that that will just push him over. Uh, I'm I'm a firm believer in Deshaun Watson, regardless of his out of football faults. Um, I I think I'm a I'm a Watson truther. Um, I think he, I think he's a really, really good quarterback. I think, to be honest, I think if if the Chiefs would have picked Watson instead of Mahomes, I think he'd have been not necessarily just as good, um, but but definitely an elite level quarterback. Um, and obviously, a lot of other things have happened that meant he's not necessarily considered in that category. But I think he's an unbelievable quarterback. So if he's playing, absolutely 100% Browns. But even if he's not playing, then I think the defense will will push him over. I agree. I've got the Browns as well. I mean, for me, Watson, as you said, um, I think he was a great... Uh, he was, for me, a top-five quarterback before yeah. before all this had happened because, you look, even they finished 4-13 four and, four and 13 in 2020 uh, and he's still the passing yards leader, uh, one, one of the most touchdowns in the league as well. Um, but then, 
He's had that year off and he just, for me, hasn't come back the same callback. And I, for months, I'm not sure whether he's going to be, you know, back to his best ever again. But um, I think the Cardinals, I think Josh Dobbs was the only good thing going for them. That they was the only player, really, that was coming out of this league. Maybe him and James Connor coming out with their heads held high from that season so far. Um, so I think to lose him, Clayton Tune, I don't know what to expect with him. It could be like a Tyson Bagley situation where first week no one knows anything about him. The tape's not there. Therefore, team can they, they can get a win for one week only. But I just think that Browns defense is just far too good, the best in the league. Um, I think this season so far. So um, yeah, for me, I think the Browns win. I think it's fairly fairly comfortable for them. Um, and speaking of which, I think it'll be comfortable for the Rams in Lambeau Field against the Packers. Uh, I think they will beat the Green Bay. Um, I just think that Jordan Love. I don't think we can say whether he's a guy or not because he's only really had a few starts. But I think for this season, I don't think he's looked that good. And I think that it's a lot, he's got a lot of learning to do. And I just think the Rams, I know they lost by 20 odd points to the Cowboys, but the Cowboys are a good team. Um, and I just think the Rams will get back to winning ways, um, whether that's through Nakua, whether that's through Cup, whether that's through their run game. I just think they'll have far too much for the Packers. And um, yeah, I'm going to give the Rams the win. Uh, same. Same, I'm going to go with the Rams. Um, uh, and again, I'm sort of slightly fenced it in with two legs dangling over the side of of John Love not being a, a starting quarterback in, in the NFL. Um, like, like you alluded to, he's not really had a lot of time to prove that yet. But from what I have seen, I've not been impressed whatsoever. Um, and then with regards to the Rams, I think with the Rams game last week, I think you get outlier games like that. And that game got away from them very, very quickly. Um, and, and then it just it happens mentality-wise and momentum-wise that games like that happen. I mean, it happened with the Dolphins the other week, um, where you just score points and points and points, and it just it just the, the game completely gets away from you. And it, it's just they're just outlier games that aren't really indicative of a, a team in general. Um so yeah, I'm gonna go with Rams as well. And then for you, David, next up is the Commanders traveling to the Patriots. How are you seeing that one? Um, I, I can't see anything other than a Commanders win, if I'm being honest. Um, I think that the Patriots um, just haven't really, other than maybe doing a little bit against the Dolphins in a, for a short period last week, um, haven't really done much this, this year. I'm not a fan of Matt Jones. Um their receiving core, I mean, their receiving core have never been, uh, never had many outstanding receivers, but uh, other than, I mean, Juju Smith-Schuster got his first touchdown last week. That kind of tells you the story of of, of their offence. So I, I honestly can't see anything other than um, than a, a commander's win. And their quarterback, um, Sam Howell, um, I think I think it potentially has the ability to be a, a very very good quarterback in this league. So, and if he's starting to grow into it, his um, his his position, then 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 that's great. One thing that might be a detriment to them is um, Chase Young being traded. Um, he's an elite pass rusher, um, and that might have an effect. But to be honest, I don't think that Patriots have enough to to beat the Commanders. I agree. I've got the commanders as well. I think if the commanders were playing a better team, I'd have them losing because I think the loss of both Young and Montez Sweat on the trade deadline, I think, is a huge hole they've just got rid of on their defensive line, which is one of their biggest strengths was that defensive line. And um, well, whilst I do think that other players may be inspired by that and may give them the chance to excel and want to replace them in the lineup, um, but I just think from, from what you, you said as well, um, I think the Pages haven't got enough on offense to really worry them. And I think Hal, you know, has impressed me. He's warm, I've warmed him more throughout the season. I mean, he's had 13 touchdowns, eight interceptions, so a lot of picks so far in his career. But if a team puts up 31 points against the Eagles, and they nearly lost, but they still put up 31 points against the Eagles, it's pretty good going. And it shows there's a good team there. And they, they were winning the game in the third quarter. So, and the Eagles have the best record in the in the whole NFL right now. So, I've really warmed to Howell over the last few weeks. And I think having watched him in person at uh, that game in FedEx Field, um, I think there's something there. And I think you only know, got obviously got McLaurin, who's a great receiver, but you got a great run game in both, particularly Brian Robinson, but also Antonio Gibson. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a good team there. And I do question the coaching, but I think for this game, I think certainly they'll they'll give the Patriots a lot of issues. Um, I think they'll win, maybe by even 10 points or more. Um, 
Next up for me um, is the Saints hosting the Bears. Um, I'm going to give the Saints to win. I just think the Bears, I think we all saw was backing it last week that that was just a one-off. And I don't think he even threw a touchdown in that win. So I think whilst Fields is out, I don't know whether he's back for this game. I think he's still out. If it is backing it, I think it's an easy win for the Saints. I think whilst they've been inconsistent, I think there's, there's more than enough there to, to beat the Bears. I, I absolutely agree. <laughs> um, I think this has been a bit of a theme. <laughs> um, and I, I, I'm in agreement with the um, with the quarterback situation. If uh, Fields is back in, then it might be closer, but I, st- I would still go for a, a Saints win. Um, and again, they, they've been quite inconsistent, but their whole division is is topsy-turvy. So, um, and I think that's one of the reasons probably why I'm going to go with the Saints win as well, that their division is completely up for grabs. Um, so they're constantly scrapping for wins every week. So, so yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with the Saints. The next up is, for me, what I think is certainly the best game of the 6pm slot. And for me, both the second best game of the week, that isn't Dolphins Chiefs, but also the second hardest to predict, um, Seattle traveling to Baltimore. Now, this one for me, I think is going to be a great game. And I'm... I, don't, I haven't looked yet what the game is at on Sky, but I can only think it has to be this game because the rest of the games don't go compute anywhere near the quality of this game. And you've got two great teams, Baltimore Ravens right now. I, I'm going to say the best team in the AFC, the most informed team in the AFC right now, um, even though they still, I, I never get excited by them. But then the Seahawks, I think have been good as well. Um, but I'm going to give the edge to the Ravens purely because they're home. That's, that's the only reason why. Nothing more than that. I think both teams are great in different areas. Uh, but I just think maybe the Ravens have slightly more on offense than the Seahawks and slightly more on defense, but it's really a small margins. And I think this might be the, this might actually be the game of the week, um, apart from Dolphins Chiefs, of course. Um, but how are you seeing it, David? Uh, again, exactly the same as you. I think that the the diversity of that Ravens offense is incredible. Um, I, I'm a really big fan of Lamar Jackson for all the 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 slander that comes his way. I'm a really, really big fan of Lamar Jackson and have been since day one. Um, and then when you factor in the the running game without Lamar Jackson as well, um, and um, the fact that they've got brilliant pass catchers um, a- across the board. But, and I, I'm a really big fan of Mark Andrews as well. Um, I think he's a top three tight end in the league. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I even though the Seahawks are a good team, I genuinely can't see anything other than a Ravens win here. Yeah, I agree. Um, next up is Houston Texans taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Who's going to win that, Dave? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I think the thing is, both teams are really inconsistent, so it, it's difficult to try and gauge who, which, which Buccaneers team is going to turn up or which Texans team is going to turn up. Um, because you can get a Texans team that's going to be a, a really good side, or you're going to get the Texans team that lost to a, a team that hadn't even got a win last week. Um, so um, I'm going to say the Texans just just a, as a, a as a coin toss. <laughs> yeah, I've got Texans as well. Uh, I've got more faith in them winning, I think, than you do, but I, I, I do. I think the Beckers will cause them problems. I think they certainly gave the Bills problems um, last time out. And they've got the extra three days rest, which could be in their favour over the Texans. But I really like CJ Stroud and I really like this Texans offence. And I think the Mike has done a great job. So I've gone for the Texans winning. Um, and then speaking of rookie quarterbacks, this should have been the first overall pick against the fourth overall pick. But now it's just um, Gardner Minshew against the first overall pick. Um, I think even with the Panthers getting their first one of the year, I just think that the Colts will have enough because they've they've done a lot. I mean, they um, I think with the fact they've lost their quarterback, who was the hope of their season, Minch has come in and done a good job. And I really like Josh Downs. I think they really should have won the other day as well. Um, and I think they just, for me, they've, they've decided to me more. I think Panthers got that win, but I think even the win they got against the Texans wasn't exactly like a, an amazing win that would blow you away. So I think it's still... Problems there, and I think there's still um, room to may more, way more rooms to improve for the Panthers. So, yeah, going to give the Colts to win. Yeah, I'm the same. Um, it, I think Gardner Minshew is probably one of the better backups in the in the league. So, if you're going to have anybody step in, and Gardner Minshew stepping in, he, I would say, he's a, a lower end 
um, first choice quarterback. Um, so that, that the the gap necessarily between Richardson and, and Minshew isn't that big. Um, and I think overall they've got a pretty decent roster. And again, they've got a close, uh, relatively close division other than the Jags. So that there's a wild potential wild card spot available in that division. And to be honest, again, I, yeah, all, although the Texans did lose against the Panthers last week, um, like you said, it wasn't necessarily convincing. Um, so yeah, I've got I've got the Colts as well. Now. What I think this will be the worst game of the week by a country mile, 9.25 p.m. It's the Giants taking on the Raiders in Vegas. Now, I will be stunned if a team scores 20 points in this game. And I wouldn't be surprised if both teams have single digits or what at least one team does. This game for me is not, I don't think even worth talking about. Raiders, Giants, I'm going to give the Raiders a win purely because they've not got rid of McDaniels. He got fired this morning. I think I might give him what we call in the Premier League, a new manager banks. And I think it'll be the same thing. Someone will come in, a fresh set of ideas. And I think um, to get away from the toxic toxicity that's for Daniels, then I think it's a win for the Raiders. I think exactly that. Um, particularly with factoring Devontae Adams into into the game. He wasn't really a factor um, the other night. Um, I know that because he was in my fantasy team and I needed him to win. <laughs> I needed him to get 10 points and he got like three or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I I agree. I think the the I mean the new manager bounce doesn't necessarily translate to to the NFL as much as it does into football. But um, I think that the fact that McDaniel's isn't there is more will be more of a positive than than a new a new coach coming in. Um, and I think that if you're looking roster on roster, the Raiders have got that little bit more quality um, than than the Giants. And I think that's what will, will give them the win. But I absolutely agree. It will be the worst game of the week, 100%. I think it'll be absolutely terrible. Um, the final lot of the late games, 9.25pm. Only three games on this time. The red zone should be quite interesting. Um, Eagles hosting the Cowboys. Um, now, for you, David, um, how are you seeing this one? It's really difficult because divisional matchups always always throw up. Um, I mean, you can see from the Broncos game last week, uh, the Broncos Chiefs game last week, that divisional matchups are, are always a little bit different. Um, and, and ordinarily, you would say, right, well, the Eagles, best team in the NFL, um, most diverse team in the NFL on both sides of the ball. Um, but that a look that game last week against the Rams gives me a, a, an inkling that the Cowboys are rolling onto something. So I, I think it'll be close either way, but I'm I'm going to stick my neck out and I'm going to say Cowboys. Hey, I like that. I've gone for the Eagles. Um, it's a massive game because the Cowboys are two wins behind the Eagles now. If the Eagles do win, like I predicted, there'll be a three-win gap. I think that with what half the season left may be a tall order to come back from. But if the Cowboys can win, they can make it a one win difference. They'll go on to six and two. The Eagles will be seven and two. So that'll be a real big game. It's a big game for the Cowboys. I think if they can do this, um, you know, this will be the most watched game out of the three by a mile. Um, I think it's a huge, it'll be a huge statement from the Cowboys, like it will be for us ourselves if we beat the Chiefs and take over that number one seed in the AFC. I think it's a big statement if they can go out and beat the Eagles. But I, I do think the Eagles win this. Um, now, Sunday night football involves what well, you would say. Probably, you know, definitely, it's probably been Mahomes' kryptonite in the last few years. It's the Bengals and Joe Burrow as they host the Buffalo Bills on Sunday Night Football in Cincinnati. Who's winning that, David? Uh, Bengals. Um, I think they're just starting to kick into gear. They, they, they seem to do this last season where they had a, a stuttering start and then absolutely fired into the, the, the second half of the season. And I think they're starting to get there now. Um, Joe Burrow, for me, is the second best quarterback in the league. Um I think that um the the Bills again they, they're a very, very good side, but they come unstuck at, at the most inopportune moments. And I think to be honest, the Bengals tend to have their number. Um and I know that that was the case with the Chiefs as well um until the um playoffs last year. Um but yeah, I think I think the Bengals are are, are gonna are gonna get this. 
I've got the Bengals as well. Now, I would love, I really, you know, I'd love to say the Bills, and I, I, I feel like I do think in this game they do seem to have a better, better, in better form than the Bills right now, and I think the Bills are, you know, are struggling. They've lost two games in the last four. They've come back from London and not been the same thing. They should have been lost to the Giants, but there was a lot of clock management issues with them. That if they had their clock management correct, the Giants would have won that game. And in the Buccaneers game, they almost let let um they let it collapse and they almost let that one slip away from them. And I think Burrow, the the, the starting to those things see for your trend. I've said it before that Burrow is the next Tom Brady, and I think that is something that Brady had a lot of times. That team would often. Start, uh, start slow under Belichick they would often use the first month or two as I was like pre-season they'd go into the, yeah. the final few games in great form down the stretch they go into the playoffs and I think we'll see this Bengals I think the Bengals this could be their year to win it for that reason alone I think they, you know, they're four and three right now they're only one win behind the Ravens in the or maybe two wins behind the Ravens in the AFC North and they're hitting form at the right time and I think Burrow Steam to be recovering from that ankle, from that injury he had, and I, and I do feel the Bengals are gonna just keep rolling and rolling, and I think it'll certainly continue uh, against against the Bills. Um, the final game, one fifteen in the morning on Monday Night Football, technically Tuesday morning for us UK fans, as the New York Jets host the Chargers. Now, I'm gonna give the win to the Jets. Now, they're winning games despite Zach Wilson's poor form. I mean, five touchdowns, five picks so far this season. He hasn't been great. They've got one of the worst passing offences in the league in terms of stats and the same as rushing offence, but their defence is saving them yet yet again. And I think that, you know, against the Chargers will be the same thing. I think they'll give Herbert and Eckler and Evan Allen and Keen Allen huge problems on that offence. I think they're just, they'll just be far too good. I think they'll be, you know, they're winning a lot of games. I think they've only allowed 20 points, I think, three times this year. So they're they're um doing X in your defence. I think that, that will win in the game alone. And I think they'll win probably in spite of Zach Wilson, who may throw a couple of picks or have a fumble or something like that. But how about you, David? Uh, I'm going to go with Chargers. Um, I, I just think, I think again, they're an inconsistent team, but they've got all the quality there. And they seem to have had this for a number of years now where they've been the sort of pretenders to the throne in the AFC West for three, four seasons. Um, but I think... Again, I'm not really a big fan. Of, and I don't want to make it a quarterback game, but I'm not really a big fan of, of Zach Wilson at all. Um, and despite how good the defence is for the Jets, I think there was a, a lot of quality that could win the game for the Chargers. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the Chargers. OK, so we have in total four different predictions. So we've both gone for the Titans to win. We've gone for wins for the Browns, Rams, Commanders, Saints, Ravens, Texans, Colts, Raiders, and the Bengals, where there's four different scores. I have the Chiefs beat the Dolphins, whereas David has the Dolphins beat the Chiefs. I have the Vikings beat the Falcons, whereas David has the Falcons beat the Vikings. I have the Eagles beat the Cowboys, whereas David has gone for the Cowboys. And David has gone for the Chargers, whereas I've gone for the Jets. So, yeah, we'll find out in a few days who wins each game and how many points we get. Um, but in the meantime, this is the end of the episode. So, first of all, Thank you, David, for coming on again. No problem. Thank you for inviting me. No problem at all. And obviously, when you get this podcast released, all David's social media details will be on the post. So if you want to follow David, do give that a go as well. Um, and yeah, um, for you, David, enjoy the game on Sunday. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.